This is the latest version of the Sokka. It's built um, with various colors. I can do all black, I can do all red, I can do red and black, or I can do black and red. And it is built based on a climbing technology ascender. I really like this ascender because it's perfectly flat. It works perfectly for the Sokka because it lays perfectly flat. It stays in total alignment with your climbing line. Um, then I have it based on this Dyneema bungee cord that is inside of the tubing. The Dyneema is uh, very wear resistant. You can tell if a bungee cord is Dyneema or if it's something else. Just take and try to cut off a little piece of it. If you cut off a piece of it and it's easy to cut, it's not Dyneema. If it's Dyneema, you're probably going to have to take a few wax at it with your scissors to make it cut. So it's based on having two bungee cords, which makes it very strong. And this bungee has more stretch than your average bungee as well. And I'll talk about that more, about the importance of that stretch. The, uh, the bungee is very easy to adjust the length. I have mine set right now for various ascenders. If I'm using a rope runner or if I'm using a rope wrench or a unisender, the height that I want that at is uh, slightly variable. So right now I have this set with a slip knot so I can make those adjustments. If someone were to climb on the same equipment all the time, it's easy to put a stopper knot there and a stopper knot at the other end and be done with it. The one nice thing about having such a stretchable bungee is that you can set that bungee so that it's just right at the top of the ascender. And when you're done with it, it makes it easy to hang, hang on your belt. And I'll adjust this for the rest of the video and, and do my climb with it adjusted where I like it. But it makes it easy to hang on the belt. This is a foot loop that we're using. And of course, if you have the clip in boots, they're great because you can just clip in, you can clip into the boot. And there's all the stretch and there's it's clipped into the boot. If you don't have the clip in boot, this is about as simple and functional as it gets. You'll see some, what they call chicken loops and such, uh, that I think are built for life support. None of this is life support. This is uh, built on a strap with an uh, elastic tether. So when you put it on your boot, you can put that on your boot and leave it on your boot. And it's, it's small enough that the loop stays very close to the top of your boot, which you want, so you're not wasting any functionality. You're not wasting um, any of the length, but that stays real close to the top of your boot, almost the same place that the clip in is on the clip in boots. So you can climb with that, and then once you've made your climb and you put the sock on your belt, you can leave that on your boot for uh, as long as you're making your climb. And then whenever you want it, you can take it off. And... So I'll make my climb with, with that on there. What I'll do right now is we're gonna make this adjustment short. All right, so here I've adjusted the uh, bungee. And like I said, if I was gonna use it like this constantly, I would just cut that off and make it a stopper knot just like the other one. Um, but that is cut completely short so that there's no extra hanging out of there. It makes it, it makes it really nice when I'm hanging it on my saddle. It pretty much stays out of the way. That's right. Um, so we'll take a shot with this and see how far it goes up the road. That was a pretty good shot there, wasn't it? That kind of shows the advantage of having that 
in perfect alignment with your climbing line. Now for me, it's probably not that important. I'm not a, I'm not a comp competition climber, but when you're talking about efficiency and reaching the max, that probably helps. One other, one other thing with the socket is you can put it, you can put it on your left foot, you can put it on your right foot. It really doesn't make any difference. When I put this, when I put this on my left foot, I like to have the ascender towards the inside, and I'll show the rest of this how I hook it up in a minute. But I like to have the ascender on that side. Of course, if I put it on the other foot, again. Having the ascender on the inside seems to uh, seems to work best. So you can put it on either foot. I prefer it on my left foot with my foot ascender on my right. I like to have because I use different ascenders. I like to have the adjustability, and I have adjustability in my bridge, so I can set my bridge at whatever length I need for my ascender that I'm using, and for my hold up thingy or my lanyard over the shoulder or bungee over the shoulder, however you're going to do that. I use a Petzl Secure and I also make a, a tether that works similarly. But what I like about this too is that I can adjust that for whatever device I'm using and it pulls straight up on the ascender, keeping everything in line. So, here when I tie in to my ascender, and I tend it, I can get everything nice and, nice and snug so that that goes up completely with me and travels and travels with me. It's a passive climbing device right now. It just needs to be tended until I get where I'm going. And then when I sit down where I'm where I'm headed, I just take the tending device off. And there I'm good to go. I can adjust the length of my bridge. And if I don't want this around my neck, it's very easy to take off. I can stuff it, or I can just flip it to the side of my body. The question always arises as to where you attach the top of the bungee cord. And what I find, again, hypothetically, the best place to attach it is in line with your climbing line. If it's off to the side, if it's attached to your D-ring, the side of your leg, wherever that goes, it's going to pull sideways and you're losing some energy from that. So the closer you can get to the very bottom of your ascender, keeping it in line with the climbing line, the more efficient it will be. Now the fact that it's connected to your body doesn't take away your efficiency because it's all part of you and your system. If it was to connected to the ground or something else, then you'd have to lift it up. It could go. It can go on your on your carabiner. I use this swivel pulley, so it works out just perfect. Connected right there. So this connection is a direct connection from here to the through the carabiner to my connector here and to my uh, lanyard over the shoulder, my tending device. So all of this is part of me. I'm not losing any efficiency to the outside. So that works out, I think, for the best attachment. Again, it could be, it works out perfect right there, but it could be anywhere in the system as long as it's as close to the climbing line as you can make it. The other thing that I want to talk about for a moment is the length of this bungee. Now what determines what determines your step? Now some people think that it's the size of the length of your legs 
or whatever, but I like to make the comparison to stairs. And you can you can take one stair at a time, you can take two stairs at a time, depending on how fast you want to go up those stairs at the moment. But what determines that that length or that step is not the length so much of the sokka or the body of the sokka, but the length of that bungee and how far that bungee can stretch. So right now, that's the length of my step. I can go double, I can go double the length of that sokka body to make that step. And that's already pulled up down in there a little bit. I could pull that out. But anyway, so that's about the length of my step. And this is about 17 inches. So when I make a step, my step, I can go all the way from the bottom and all the way up to where it connects to my pulley. And that's, that's more step than I'll ever need to take. But that step is determined by the length or how far that bungee will react. All right, there's nothing new about using a knee ascender for a rope walking system. I think they've been used that way for years and years. There's just been a thousand different ways to try to get that knee ascender to make an appropriate step. In this case, I put a bungee inside of a tube. It attaches to the dorsal attachment on the back of my climbing harness. It takes all of that bungee and everything in order to get that knee ascender to make an appropriate step. Using the compactness of the Sokka and the double bungee, I can get the same kind of a step in a much more compact package.